Hi, I'm Jeff Stokes. Welcome to Jeff's Daily Dose of Encouragement. Today I want to encourage you about doing mighty things for God. There's a couple of verses that really spoke to me this morning. One was really encouraging and the other one was really challenging, but they're both in their own way about doing mighty things for God. Over in Second Chronicles 27, we're reading about the life of King Jotham and it says here in verse 6 so Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God so if you if you want to become mighty in God and do mighty things for God you prepare your ways before the Lord you set your heart towards God and the things of God and 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 seek after him diligently the second verse is this one you might remember the situation but I'll, I'll, I'll read it out and it says it says this then the disciples under sorry verse 14 in Matthew 17 it says and when they were come to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is, he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, and this sounds like a really, really scathing, but it's just, it's just truth, it's just fact. And we've got to be careful not to be um, condemned by this, but just hear what the Lord's saying. Jesus said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Now we can get condemned by that, and often times in Christian circles, the person that is being prayed for, the person with the sickness, has been condemned and blamed for having unbelief. But here, it's the ministers. It's those that are praying for people. And, and Jesus makes it really simple and says, it's because of your unbelief that you can't do that. So flick that around <clears throat> when you look at the that verse from, about Jotham. So we need to do things to feed our faith so that we have a faith level so that we're not in unbelief and then we can pray for people to do that. Because of your unbelief. He didn't say, oh, no, it's because you haven't got the gift or you haven't got this gift, or you haven't got that gift. It's just because of unbelief. And then he said, For verily I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, so you don't have to have a whole lot of faith, just enough. Just enough. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove from here, and go yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goes not out by prayer, but by prayer and fasting. So there's another clue. And how much how much prayer and fasting? I mean I look at this account and I think, you know, did did Jesus pray and fast more than the disciples? It's not really clear to me in the scriptures whether whether that's the case or not. But in the end there seems to be there also a correlation between prayer and fasting and building our faith up. That all we need, all we need is to, to be able to operate at a level of faith so we can do great things for God. So that's all my encouragement for you today. I hope that makes sense. I think the verse from Jotham, he set his heart, he set his heart towards the Lord and so that's why he became great. And the thing is that if we set our hearts towards God and, and give our hearts to the things of God and build ourselves up and <clears throat> do all the things we can 
and do to keep our faith strong, we can do great things for God too. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And just I'm just reminded of that people like the great Smith Wigglesworth. He just reads scripture all the time. He just constantly reads scripture. Now he set himself to do things that other people just are not prepared to do. Like I was listening to a, an account yesterday. Apparently he, he would stop every 15 minutes. He would read some scripture or recite scripture or something. <clears throat> that sounds really excessive. But that's the price he had to pay in order to stay in that realm of faith. <clears throat> and because of his wrong faith he could see things in the spirit and deliver people so we all need to seek the Lord so that we can operate in a place where we're in faith all the time and not in unbelief so God bless you have a wonderful day and I really pray <clears throat> that you and I too will all do great things for God remember Jesus said these things shall he do in greater things because I go to my Father which is in heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit so we individually and collectively as a body could do that and there is a there is a worldwide revival that the world's never seen before that has been prophesied by many over the years that is still yet to come and we're in the generation to be a part of that. So we should be expecting and, and building ourselves up and be ready for that wave. God bless you. Have a great day.